In this episode, we're going to discuss ways that you can start your session of Star Trek Adventures. This is STA Engage. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, as always, Dr. RPG Jeff Harvey. In the last episode, we talked with Jim Johnson about Klingons. Uh, it was a great episode, and if you want to learn more about running Klingon game, uh, creating Klingon characters, or just breathing a little life into the Klingons that you use in your campaign, check that episode out. A lot of fun we had on that one. Uh, in this episode, though, we are going to talk about ways that you can help start your sessions, uh, jumpstart the role play of your of your characters, of your players, role-playing motors, and uh, all of that fun stuff about creating and starting out your sessions. <laughs> anyway, uh, before we do all of that, uh, please welcome once again my illustrious co-host, the luminous Michael Dismuke. It's, it's only because I exfoliate. <laughs> <laughs> Dove moisturizer. Exactly. Oh, He's right. And yeah, let's get into this. Uh, definitely. Uh, uh, I just have to tap on that last show with Jim was great. Uh, I had the most fun ever playing a character in Star Trek Adventures as I played a Klingon flight controller. So go, go for the Klingon games too. Nice. The goal of the show is to help fans of Star Trek and of role playing better engage with the Star Trek franchise, the Star Trek role playing adventures game and the community at large. Uh, this show is brought to you by the letter B, the number four B4. Uh, and the support of people like you. So like, subscribe, share, support us on Patreon, uh, help us keep the show going for the rest of season one uh, and show your support uh, so that we can make season two a, a reality. Rewards includes everything from uh, getting your name in the credits, uh, invites to live Q and A's that we're gonna be doing at some point, um, access to, to the back catalog of all the previous episodes of this show, as well as old shows I did years ago uh, that are probably no good anyway, but check them out. Um, They're great. Yeah. Behind the scenes looks at STA Engage. I do a lot of recording before we get going. You can see some of that, uh, the stuff that doesn't embarrass us too much uh, and so much more. So please, if you can back us on Patreon uh, and if you can't, we totally understand everyone gives what they can. Um, just share us an episode. If you share this episode, if you can't, um, you can find out more uh, info about the folks that sponsor the show currently. Uh, as well as everyone who helps us put the show on, our production team at Studio Tembo, the fine, fine folks over at ContinuingMissionSTA.com, and our primary sponsor for Season 1, Adventure Inc. Just follow the links in the doobly-doo. Let's get started. Uh, how do we start a session? Uh, for me, I start with a little chat, right? I, I want to make sure everyone's relaxed and that we get there a little bit early so that we're not, uh, so we have a chance to catch up, so we're not trying to do that in the middle of play, and, and we get started and going when everyone is ready. What about food? Yeah, food. And although in, in, in the times we're currently in with, with COVID and everything else, um, we don't do a lot of that. We all eat beforehand. But we're also isolated now with the social distancing and staying at home and everything else. Take a few minutes to remember that your friends that you're playing with are your friends and that you want to spend time with them mm -hmm. because you don't know what's going on in their lives. One of my, one of my players uh, we found out was very, very depressed. And we actually added in a, a pregame time, a 30 minute pregame time, like come and talk and we'll just hang out and there's no expectations and yep. we'll get, get to play when we get to play. Yeah. We've had to do the same thing. We've seen it and life happens, you know, uh, probably same thing for you, but my players on discord are literally all over the planet. So, so things are different from different perspectives. And so we do spend time catching up. Um, so it's not the news, but it's actually facts. <laughs> so uh, that is good to do. So everyone gets into the gaming mood, right? Right. Yeah. Um, what we do too is we do a recap. So we go around the table. I encourage people to go around the table. Um, we do something called mission logs where usually they've already written a mission log from the last mission. So that helps but at the same time, I also want them to kind of restructure the universe they're in. So we talked about world building last time, and each episode changes their world a little bit. It could be new technologies, something they discovered, a loss of a crew member. So I actually spend a little downtime with them, talk each one, what's your perspective, who have you been hanging out with, what have you been doing, and that's a recap of since the last episode. Um, and that's a great way to adapt the story because sometimes the players are seeing things that you're not seeing and vice versa their perspective on things may be different. So you really want to have everyone cohes cohesive. It creates a better story. 
um, even better than the one you may have originally planned as a game master. And um, you want to try to make sure everyone at the table has some input on the recap too. Don't let the players designate a single note taker who show, shares the world from only their point of view. Everyone needs to chime in. Um, I also asked them some questions, maybe prompting them, like, does anyone have anything else or is that it? So kind of get them all drained and that gets them revved up for the next um, adventure. It could be, it's a simple question, but it works. And during the cap, uh, recap, I let them make jokes. They probably have something to say about some of the characters they met last time, maybe some of the goofs and complications from the previous game. That loosens everybody up. They get to tell the story their way and you know, gets all the silly done at the beginning so that then you can get into the serious Star Trek universe. Right. I think it's important when we're doing, when you're doing the recap too, for the GM not to throw too much information out there. Uh, you want to know more what the players saw, not what you tried to show them. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that's a very important aspect about uh, the, the, the recaps. Yeah. In fact, if they all had a perspective on something, I make that the reality. Oftentimes, Shh, don't tell them that I change the story for them. I, I've done that many often. Like there's a lot of times when a player will have a better idea of what's coming next than what anything <laughs> you ever wrote. So yeah. um, could this be indicative of this? It's like, oh uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was planning. Totally could. Yeah. Let me change just one little thing. over here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, <laughs> and it's worth it. Uh, players are great storytellers and uh, you're only one person. It's hard to write for everybody. So sure. I'm um, speaking yeah, of writing. Do do? Mm -hmm. Right. Speaking of writing, I think you should always try to write a cold open scene. I do this a lot of times. We do the cold open for the show, obviously. Um, but I do a cold open for almost every game I run, um, including non Star Trek games. It just fits really well with Star Trek because it's a TV show style. I um, mean, this is basically the bit of the show that happens before the opening credits. So that uh, that bit that's a little teaser, like um, I think I have some examples as I go on, but one of the ones I can think of is the Enterprise blowing up a bunch of times, right? It's that episode where, you know, it's all hands abandoned ship and repeat all hands abandoned and then boom, the ship is gone. Um, that's a really good, uh, a really good cold open and it gets the players really thinking about what's going to happen. Um, but you can also do, uh, you can use this as a teaser for just a little bit of RP that gets things started. You can, you can drop a minor cliffhanger, uh, uh, you can have an admiral give a, a quick briefing to the captain. Um, the, the sky's really the limit. You can do anything you want in this short scene, um, but you want to keep it short, right? It's one to two pages at the most if you were writing it out, um, which is about one to two minutes of actual screen time if you're thinking about how you're filming. But um, the, the scene might be a little railroady for some players, but that's okay because you're just setting up a tone here and narrowing the scope to keeping it on rails is a really good way to to set up that tone. Um, yeah, I think what you're talking. Oh, go ahead. Go go ahead. No, I was going to say, and and with that said too, I know on uh, continuing missions, if you search teasers, there's actually some suggested show openers, and what they are, it's basically just one or two dice rolls, something maybe humorous, maybe someone had a, a worm extracted from their gut as the show opening, so it creates a little conversation, and then it would go into, of course, we know the the, sh the season credits, the opening credits for a TV show. Right. Yeah. And like I said, you could, there's a lot of things you can do to set your tone up right here. Like, again, you can have the all head abandoned ship thing. We all know that one. It could be as simple as a doctor going around and feeding his captive specimens in, in the sick bay and a Klingon trying to, trying to drink prune juice for the first time before a giant portal opens up next to him. Um, Dax is a mysterious lover showing up, Cisco being in the 1950s. There's a lot of great openings that are memorable that will hook your players. So there you go. Yeah, I think right after that hook two, it's important not to just jump into act one, because this is really what we consider prologue, right? It's important. Once that happens, sit back. And back in the days when we were around a table, that's when, when you should get up and go get yourself a new slice of pizza. While they're like, what just happened? Wait a second. Let their mind go, you know, um, and, and that's going to let the moment breathe. And then it's like, OK, you guys ready to start? They may have a whole bunch of questions. It's like, that's why we're here to play. Right. Yeah, I also think that when you come back, you should do a captain's log, right? The, it's a great and an iconic way of opening your story. It's in almost every series of Star Trek, although I've noticed rewatching Enterprise or actually watching Enterprise for the first time through, um, they don't do a lot of them in Enterprise, but almost everything else, they do the captain's log a little bit. They even start lower decks with a captain's log the first time. Well, I noticed Next Generation oftentimes opened up even the first scene pre yeah. opening credits with it whereas voyager did what you're talking about after the credits came back right yeah next gen did a lot of after the credits and they did a bunch before the credits too so it's a good way to you can use it in either instance it's as long as you're setting up the tone with it 
Mm-hmm. Um, give the give whatever you've written to your captain, or you know, you don't want to tell your captain what's going on, but you want to make sure that your captain is the one giving the 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 opening. Um, in all cases, I think well. In every case, the, the captain would be doing it. I mean, there's definitely points when you'd have your doctor giving the report or a mm-hmm. uh, chief science officer or something like that giving the report. You could even have an ensign hiding in a closet giving the report. I always liked it when the, oh, <laughs> that's a good <laughs> lower decks reference. Right. Um, I, and I was just thinking that the the recent discovery also, the medical officer did give a two minute, you know, opening log. But I always liked it when you you have, you have, uh, LaForge sitting in a shuttlecraft, a type nine by himself, and he's on his way back from an opera or conference or something. That's something right. option too. <laughs> it's actually, you can use it as a, as a whole plot device too. There's the wharf going through uh, when he had the, the trophy that he wins. That was great. Um, that's a good one. To, that's a good way to do it. And again, they'll let the player rewrite it so that it's in their voice. You can create it as the GM. In fact, you should create it as the GM, but you should let the player rewrite it so that they can do it in their voice. Um, this log can be a good contrast to cold open too. Uh, it lets players settle back into things. Uh, remember that distracted players are disruptive players and uh, use the hangout time, the cold open and the captain's log to make sure everything settles down uh, in stages. You're kind of bringing it down as you're getting closer to writing playing the game so that everyone's really can we invested. Hear, yeah, can we hear that one more time? You said distracted players are disruptive players. I love that. I'm remembering that. Never heard yep. that before. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I people talk about phones at the table. I think if you, if you, we'll talk about this again in, in a later episode, we're talking about how to be a good player. But um, if you start and you, you, if you, if you gradually bring the players into the story uh, over a couple of beats, a couple of things, whatever, they're more likely to not be on their phone or reading a book or whatever it is they're doing uh, while they should be paying attention to your game. Make this open short though, right? You don't want to go on for five minutes um, I try to keep it less than 100 words, a paragraph, something like that, maybe two paragraphs. It gets a long at two paragraphs, but um, leave the ending of it kind of vague, um, less vague really, and more like open. Um, the captain can start, so, so the captain can really like start the first scene. I, in my games, I, I tend to let players just, you know, build the scenes that they want to play in. So it's a good way to to, to bring the bring it together. Like is, is the opening scene going to be the captain sitting in his, ready room or in his quarters or are they going to start in sick bay are they going to start in main engineering are they going to sit around the conference table and talk about the upcoming adventure um, i think those are all really good ways for the character to to the captain to start bringing things in and let the rp really drive the narrative from there yeah yeah that's a really good idea now now after we get through that you know prologue and that opening scene and dun dun now, normally on the TV shows, this is where all of a sudden the opening credits come in and the ships and stuff like that. I'm a super uber geek. And so what I did is I went ahead and designed one. You can go to continuing missions and type in a show opener or look at my YouTube uh, link, which we're going to link on this. And, and it's something you may want to do. There's a variety of them out there. I kind of pushed the push the. Um, border to make sure it looked real. I wanted it to look as real as possible. So that my players love that because after we write that prologue, I tell them, well, you know, we can't continue till you all rewatch the show opener and then <laughs> they rewatch it. And then we hit into act one. Yeah. I don't have a full sequence video sequence yet. Although when I saw the one that you have, I decided I'm going to have to make one. I don't know how to make one, but I'm going to figure it out. I'll help um, you. I'll help you. I'll awesome. get you there. Um, I do have a theme song for our show though. And I did a voiceover um, that I was going to have the captain read and record it so that they could, you know, the, that opening, the space, the final frontier thing. I wrote an opening for that one for my game with the ranger. But that was, I love fun. that. I want to hear that sometimes. Send it to uh, me. Please. It's terrible. I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you at some point. <laughs> no, no, it's not terrible because this is RPG and it's like karaoke. You don't want the people who are great. You want, you want, it's like karaoke. We show up for RPG. You just want everyone to be themselves. I love it. Right. <laughs> uh, one final thought on starting on starting out your game, don't be afraid to jump in, make a splash, confound expectations. This is the one time I think confounding expectations is a really good thing. Um, you can get a lot of tension built in the first 30 seconds of any session. Alternatively, you can, if you're trying to uh, have a more laid back tone, pace out the opening a little longer if you need to. It's okay to not end every scene on a cliffhanger. Let me say it again, it's okay to not end every scene on a cliffhanger. A lot of GMs do that. Sometimes players just want to feel like the like, like life aboard a ship it has some normalcy to it before they are ripped 
from their quiet world and plunged into a swirling uncertainty that is space. Um, the Your open sets the tone for your players and what they're going to expect to be reflected in the rest of the episode. But that doesn't mean that tone can't suddenly shift. Important that you can be allowed to shift the tone when you, when you need to. Um, this can be a little tricky to do, uh, a bit of a tightrope to walk. You can ramp up tensions, but it's really hard to walk it back. It can be jarring to uh, jarring blow. It can be jarring to blow the ship up in the first 10 seconds of your show. Uh, but when you come back into the credit post credit roll, uh, everything being back to normal, it works fine on TV because uh, you have 90 seconds of commercial and 90 seconds of opening credits and probably more commercials because that's the way TV is these days. Um, but your audience has a chance to settle down or your players don't really have that. Um, use that jarringness. If you're going to use, if you're going to have that jarring, use it as part of your narrative and as one of your, uh, one of your, your, your storyteller toolkit pieces. Um, whatever you do though, in your opening, have that story, uh, have that story beat that tonal setup, uh, that minor fall, that major lift, uh, use it to compose the story, to grab your players and to set them up with a false sense of security if needed. Um, the opening 30 seconds of your session should not simply be left to chance. Although I do like the idea that you mentioned earlier, Michael, about the, the being able to roll what your opening is going to be. Um, but use that, that, that shot, use that beat and don't miss your opportunity to, to mess up the, and by messing up the flow of everything that's going on. So I had a couple of song references in that one, but I couldn't get them out of my head. <laughs> I'm humming um, them in my head. <laughs> uh, on that note, uh, we're going to call this a wrap next time. We're going to talk more about, uh, how to end games. And this is one of the things that for me is very, very important. Um, your wrap up questions, your wrapping up your session and getting players to think about their characters between sessions. It's, uh, it's not as hard as you might think. So tune in next time for lessons part two or well, what do you know? Uh, until then. If you like what you hear and you want to help the show out, share this episode with one other person who might enjoy what, they're, what we're doing here. Anybody. Uh, I am your host, Dr. RPG Jeff Harvey, on behalf of myself, my co-host, Michael Dismuke, and everybody that works behind the scenes here, uh, live long and prosper.